Hi guys, today I'm going to walk you through how we're going to set up our duckweed lab. We didn't get time to do this in class, so I'd like you to come prepared with both your um, problem statement and a general idea of what you're going to set up your experiment, how you're going to set up your experiment. The goal of this lab is we're going to be investigating population dynamics and then later applying that to conservation. We're going to be using this plant right here called duckweed. There's actually several different species of duckweed and after doing this lab for a few years, we're going to use a duckweed that um, thrives in kind of aquarium tanks, uh, slightly warmer water, um, slightly more stable conditions than you would find outside. So we study duckweed. There are lots of species we could choose to study. We could study yeast, we could study um, all sorts of things. But duckweed, um, like many of those others, grows rapidly. Um, it's a really typical R-selected species um, in that it's going to reproduce frequently um, and that it, you know, kind of uh, can be limited easily um, by different environmental factors. It is a plant, a producer, so it photosynthesizes to grow and reproduce. So you need to kind of recall some of that information about the inputs and outputs of photosynthesis. Um, it can reproduce mostly through budding, so it's actually going to kind of um, grow and divide um, and you'll see this kind of as one leaflet turning into like it has a little appendage and then you'll see you know the next day you come to count you'll see more. Um, duckweed plants are limited by nutrient availability usually um, and uh, other density dependent factors. It is a non-native aquatic plant but it doesn't usually when it takes over the surface area it's um, here in the Pacific Northwest, it doesn't usually threaten other ecosystems, but you can see large blankets of it when you're hiking through the woods. Your task is you're going to pick one environmental condition. This could be pH or temperature, um, duration of light, intensity of light, and you're going to measure how that affects the growth of a duckweed population. I want you to uh, limit yourself to just manipulating one factor and create an experimental group and a control group. Um, make sure to set up multiple replicates so calculations can be done. You can even partner with other teams so that um, you have different, we'll go over this in a second, but that you have you know, more replicates than one group could accomplish in class. Um, let me go to this slide first. So in setting up your experiment today, I want you to think about, you know, what is testable in the parameters of a laboratory setting. So there's lots of awesome questions out there that just really are beyond the scope of what you can handle in terms of data collection. So think about, in setting up your experiment, what you can collect. I will provide tons of duckweed. And here are some other things that I can provide you. Um, carbon dioxide and oxygen monitors and chambers. I think I have a total of four. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't set up your own chamber and take CO2 and O2 measurements, but I have some that are specifically designed for this purpose. I have tons of temperature probes, some of which can be taped and left in there so you can kind of record continuous data. I have UV light sources and also heat lamps, ice. I do have some aqueous fertilizers and um, Lots of different glasswares and saran wrap, test tubes, beakers, etc. Many students have actually found that it's easiest for them to bring in clear cups um, for labeling purposes and for just the ease of making lots and lots of replicates. And then lastly, there are some really good experiments I've seen come through using animals and um, kind of the reciprocity of like if you put certain animals in the test tube with the duckweed, what ends up happening to population growth. But if you're an IB tester, please don't do that. If you're an IB tester, it's not worth um, that uh, kind of ethical scrutiny um, and you should steer away from that. So here's two examples with the um, stuff that I've provided you, with the supplies I've provided you. You could measure, you know, O2. Um, Photosynthesis can indicate productivity, and so you could actually change an environmental factor and measure oxygen, um, or you could measure the total number of individuals in the population. Um, but 
This is a little bit harder than it sounds because you need to decide when you count a, a budding duckweed as its own individual. Um, you also need to handle, you need to kind of have a method for deciding when an individual is bleached and has died. And these two things can actually be more difficult to distinguish than you would think. I suggest you do some research on this, um, kind of come up with a game plan to make sure that it's included in your method. There are other possibilities too. Please don't feel limited um, to these two dependent variables, but these are two that have shown some success in the past. So tonight you're going to go back and decide a couple environmental factors you want to manipulate. So when you get in your group tomorrow, you guys can pick one and write up your experimental group and your control group and decide on how many replicates you're going to have. Let me show you a sample experiment. This is um, from a previous lab, and their question was, how does changing temperature affect the yeast population size? Temperature can be a major limiting factor to yeast, and yeast is um, a small, single-celled organism that is essential to providing, you know, um, fermentation and lots of um, good things that we, we consume. So here's an example of how they set it up. They set up... Uh, one, they set up five replicates at four degrees Celsius, five replicates at 24 degrees Celsius, and um, a few more at each of the uh, temperature gradients. Then what they did is they measured the size of the CO2 bubble. So as these guys respire, they're going to give off CO2 as they're using sugar. And so the size of the CO2 bubble correlated with how active they were. So they could measure how many millimeters of CO2 bubble they got at the top of the test tube. Um, and then they organized that information in a data table. You guys should have a draft data table. It doesn't mean it has to be the one you use in your final lab, but you need a place to start putting data um, right away. Here you can see they are 4 degrees Celsius, 24, 30, and 44. And you can see um, bubble height measured in millimeters. And you get a sense of kind of which one was the most active right off the bat. Um, your planning is not due tonight, but it will be due um, as homework from next class period. So think about, um, you know, the three elements on your uh, lab rubric. You guys can do this as a group. You'll obviously collect data as a group, but your um, graphing of data and your conclusion will be individual. And if you're an IB tester, all revisions um, on your rough draft need to be completed and submitted to me in a hard copy, meaning not online, by March 1st. Please make sure if you're an IB tester, you're not working with other IB testers. Um, you can work alone, but it's not totally necessary as long as you're in charge of setting up the design of the experiment making sure your data is okay. Um, some things you guys are going to need to um, apply this to, some analysis elements, is, you know, how can you um, look at your duckweed data and apply it to other R-selected species? How these species grow and their pattern, um, their survival ship curves, etc. Also, are there other important connections to be made to invasive species or species that threaten biodiversity and conservation efforts? Um, and then lastly, you know, you can tie this into some of those density dependent factors that we've discussed. As species are, um, you know, kind of limited to smaller and smaller and smaller areas to find the, uh, the you know, uh, things they need to survive, the resources they need to survive, how will increased density um, affect their populations. So think about these. We're going to brainstorm more uh, next class after we share out our problem statements. So here's the elements I expect you to get a handle on with your group next class. And I'm not going to give you a ton of time, so definitely brainstorm now and come ready to share, defend, and kind of, you know, come up with one group problem statement. Identify your independent variables and your dependent variables and then determine um, what you need to control, okay? And then also your controlled experiment um, and your experimental group.
Okay. Feel free to watch through this one more time if you kind of want to get an understanding. And I highly, highly recommend um, that you do a little bit of preliminary research on duckweed and keep track of those sources so that you can use them in your citations.